I'm Derek McGivern from QRAMP, and we're going to get started in showing you how to assemble a QRAMP modular ramp system. Uh, before you get started, make sure you have your system sketch available. That should come with every system that you purchase. As with any construction project, you should pay special attention to safety. Safety glasses and a pair of gloves are a must for any construction project. I always like to have a couple of tools handy to deal with packaging. In this case, a knife and a set of side cutters. All ramp construction projects, you'll need a level and a tape measure. Now to the tools you'll actually use in assembling the Q-Ramp. For all connections on the Q-Ramp system, you'll need either a 5 or 6 millimeter Allen wrench or a 13 millimeter ratchet. We recommend long-handled tools for ease of use and to keep your knuckles away from edges. That's it. One of the main things that you want to remember when assembling a QRAMP modular access system is that the system is assembled from the platform to the ground. So the platform is installed first, leveled, and then the running sections are installed piece by piece to the ground. Same with the handrail coming from the platform after the entire structure, substructure is done. You start with the handrail assembly from the platform down to the ground. That's how the system's installed, and that's going to guarantee that you do it right and do things in the right order every time. The first thing I do is take a measurement from where we're going to put our platform. Uh, the platform here, so I can tell you that this is going to be 14 and a half inches high, and then again we're going to have another four inches to get to the, or five, four and a half inches to get to the, uh, to the threshold. And the threshold is really what we're most concerned about. So we're looking at 19 inches in total rise. And I know already because of our sketch that we have nine and a half feet of ramp. That gives us a rough approximate slope of one to six. The one to six slope means that whatever height that the uh, platform is set to over here, that you're actually gonna go down by eight inches for the next module down. And we know this because all of our modules are four feet in length. Yeah. You can see here that we take the module three or the platform and we set that up first. The module three is set roughly and approximately in place. And we support one end with a stool. From our rough measurements, we take the opportunity to measure out the length of the leg that we'll need to be close to our final dimension. Once the module three has all the legs installed and we're close, then you can proceed in leveling. Attaching the legs, similarly to the rest of the system, involves two 10 millimeter screws on either side of each leg. Yeah, say, screws yeah, are removed from the platform as they put it the up. The leg is put in place. They finish. Same with the backs. And the legs are attached to the module three frame. Yep. 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 Then we take a running section, in this case a module two, and attach to the module three frame. We insert the module connectors into the module two frame and slide the module into place. Again, another 10 millimeter module connection screw is used to fasten the system together. After that's done, we move on to our Module 1. We remove the shipping screws from the module connectors, and then we rotate the legs into place. <laughs> so now Matt and I, once he's done, we're going to rotate these legs up, but we're going to be careful. The, the tendency is when you rotate the legs up for this thing to slide back down, I want to make sure that this connector in here stays engaged into the side rail. So that's it. So once that's up, we're going to take one of our bolts and we'll put it in just to make sure. We're going to connect the Module 1 running section with the Module 2 that's already installed to the Module 3 platform. Again, it's as easy as inserting the connector into the open space on the Module 2 and bringing the two modules together. A good hint to always remember is to make sure that you install the system feet after every module is inserted into the system. As you're working module by module, 
make sure you put your feet down underneath each leg before you add the next section. That'll prevent you from having a very heavy ramp to lift to put feet underneath at the end. The module four or entry exit piece goes together just like the rest of the system. Two connectors are inserted into the module beam and the modules are connected. One screw on each side of the leg and your system's fastened together. Moving on to the handrail, for platform handrails, it's a good idea to have two people involved in the process. One person holding the large piece of welded handrail assembly and the other putting on at least the first bolt. All handrails are assembled the same way. Most connections are a carriage bolt and a nylock nut. The Module 3 platform has two welded handrail assemblies, the outside or large handrail assembly, and the inside or small handrail assembly. Every section of handrail outside of platforms is exactly the same. The easiest way to put one of these on is simply to start on one side, hook in, pinch, hook in, pinch, hook in, pinch, and same all the way down. Okay, once that's in, you press in the center a little bit, it'll make sure that most of your connections are all engaged properly, and then pull it down. There's, an in, there's a little gap between the top of the leg and the, uh, and the cover, and that just basically tells you where the, uh, where the engineered gap is for the caps to form. So with the caps, very similarly, these two tines on the bottom are made to line up perfectly on the inside of this leg. So this lip goes on the outside, those tines go on the inside. Once you put it down like that, that's perfect, snap it closed. That's it.